Well, hello there and welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live on this classic wooden motor cruiser here in Victoria, British Columbia, along with the loving memory of my pup Jordy, all the while fixing it up for some pretty major cruising someday. If that's the sort of thing you might find interesting, please consider sticking around and subscribing. I'd love to have you. So today, the much anticipated and much dreaded exhaust system. Well, like any wooden cruiser of the era, this boat has wet exhaust and it comes out just underneath that um, dead crab infested swim good right there. And let me show you where it goes before that. Uh, down in this hellhole of the Lazarette bilge. I uh, hope there's enough light down here for you to see. There is the through hull, basically it's a three inch bronze threaded through hull that comes out just above the water line, which I have capped off over the last year uh, while the exhaust system was out. So, gotta take that all apart and set up a new exhaust system all the way up to the engine. It's sort of fun, but it's a lot of crawling around in bilges and I can tell you my back isn't much for that these days. Let's get started. And getting started means clearing out all behind here, underneath the bed, all the way forward, and as well, uh, clearing all this out so I can get down underneath there where the muffler will actually live. Just the way I love to start the day. Whoa. So as I mentioned yesterday, the exhaust is going to come out of this exhaust elbow where the um, raw water will mix with it. It is now a wet exhaust system and cool enough for rubber hose. So there'll be a two inch rubber hose on here that comes off back here somewhere. So let's carry on down here in the bilge. So somewhere between the engine and that little void going underneath my bed, it will transition from two inch uh, rubber hose to three inch rubber hose, probably here somewhere. And at that point, it'll carry on this three inch rubber hose and enter the inlet on this uh, fiberglass lift muffler. Now this is called a lift muffler because it's full of water. So it basically lifts water. Basically, it'll because the exhaust has water in it, water's gonna come in here along with exhaust and it'll fill this tank up. Well, this uh, outlet goes all the way, maybe an inch from the bottom. So what happens is the pressure from the exhaust will push water up and out and out to the transom, uh, which means all the uh, exhaust bubbles up through water, making it quite a bit quieter. Okay, so it's gotta go, oh, I don't know, here somewhere. Now the trick is, it's gotta be at exactly the right height, and we're gonna get to that in detail in a minute. But I'm gonna suspect about here will be okay. I'm, I'm glad I suspect that, because that's about all the option I have. Uh, now because the exhaust comes out the top, it needs an elbow right away, and that elbow will go about there, hoping to get just underneath here, although I may have to trim that, and then it'll go through another uh, fiberglass coupler, and then three inch rubber hose all the way to the transom, and we'll talk about what we're gonna do back there. The exhaust has to run downhill all the way to the transom, with the exception of dealing with the muffler. In other words, it enters the muffler actually lower than it leaves. But as long as the point where this water draw, flows that way, it can't possibly flow backwards and up and into the engine. So I've determined that the top of the sole is 13 inches above the water level. Now I'm gonna actually call it 12 because the boat is sitting a little high in the front right now because there's no fuel tanks, etc. So I'm gonna say we're 12 inches above the water line, which gives me 12 inches from here to the water line, but a little less because of the spillover. So I gotta calculate where the spillover is here, which is four inches below here. So I have a total of eight inches run from this spillover to the water line at the transom. Now it's very convenient that the bottom of the fitting at the transom is basically at the water line. So that makes calculations pretty easy. Now using the sole as the datum because it's relatively flat, I've transferred the level over to here, added in a spacer block. I know that the spillover at the engine is four inches below the sole, so four inches to below the sole here. So if I was to take the full three inches of this elbow, in other words, as it comes off the muffler and slide it in like that, I would have roughly seven inches of um, 
uh, drop from the four that would mean three inches of slope between the engine and this point right here. Now that's a lot of my total eight but in some ways I'd rather have a lot of it when the boat is side to side. In other words when the uh, the exhaust pipe is running sideways because the boat is much more likely to roll this way and possibly slosh water back and forth than it is to pitch fore and aft uh, any great distance. So now that I have a pretty good idea um, where the exhaust pipe is going to start as it moves aft. Hello birds. Now it's time to take this apart and put on the fittings I have for this to see at what height it's going to have to end and then we can calculate our route forward. You can just see uh, a cut in the bulkhead there for the old exhaust which was much too low because that's the way the ex original exhaust was. I'm imagining it's going to be up several inches from that. But anyway, let's get to it. Starting with taking this apart and there's a little hidden drama there. Okay, well, the reason I've been dreading this is because the old exhaust hose, which was about three and a half or four inches, basically was just clamped around the threads of this bronze fitting. And it was pretty gross. So when it came off, uh, I was glad to imagine that I'd be able to redo this properly. Uh, unfortunately, there's a ton of tar in the threads of the fitting. So it's going to take a bit of work to clean it up. And uh, further than that, um, the water level is about here right now. Um, that's why a little water just trickled out of here. And uh, I have a bung stuck in from the outside, which is going to look after anything in the way of serious water ingress. But getting all of this off of here, it starts with some sort of rubbery band of some sort. Ooh. But underneath all this is a nice bronze threaded through hull, in this case, through transom. So I'm going to try and take this all off with a wire wheel on my drill. Let's see how that works. Looks like it's going to work. It's just going to take forever. And I get my knees in the right place here. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting it pretty cleaned out. Try again with the brush in a minute. Did manage to punch a hole in my thumb. Well, it's evident that at least at some point there was a copper tube uh, brazed into the inside of this, um, which would scare the heck out of me uh, because, of course, vibration would make quick work of uh, breaking that off. A little heat has helped quite a bit to soften the rubber. Yes, I do have a garden hose right here. So how about these two beauties? Well, I can tell you the combined value of these two delights uh, is pretty much a mortgage payment. <laughs> well, for me anyway. So let's see if actually I can get these threads to engage at all uh, before we go too far. Yeah, that's going to be fine. As long as I can get a little more of that cleaned up, we should be just fine. Yeah, 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 it's just work, it's just work. Now, the astute amongst you will know that this is not, in fact, pipe thread where this is. This is straight thread because all through hulls are straight thread. But you can usually get away in a situation like this with threading pipe thread onto straight thread. And I think it's going to be okay by the time I get a little leverage on that. Okay, if you're not familiar with the chain vice grip, get familiar with it because this is one of life's greatest tools. Really what I should do is go get a thread file. Okay, I've decided I'm gonna have to make a separate project of this uh, because to get this on uh, for the test start, um, I'm content with that, but obviously I think I want to uh, put a thread file on here and really clean this up because I want at least three quarters of an inch or an inch of engagement and I'm only getting about half. So I'm going to put it on uh, temporarily. Don't you all love when I say temporarily? I know you know what that means, but in this case, I think I can assure you I am going to make an effort to make sure that this gets done right sooner than later. That'll do. Uh, 
Okay, that's about exactly where I want this to come. I gotta say, this sort of stuff is really starting to beat me up. Let's look at the hose. Hey, hey, hey. Let's see how this works out. I'm gonna assume you do this from the other end. There's two sheaths. One winds one way and one the other. Uh, I think the tiniest slit with a knife will be safe. Then, well, this embarrassing mess you see here is incredibly effective at figuring out the next step. So the big level is sitting level with um, the sole, which is level with the water line in principle. It's off by 0.6 or so of a degree right now, and that's because the boat is sitting high in the front, no fuel tanks. But it doesn't really matter because the lower level is a laser level, and it is now parallel, more or less, with the uh, water line, or at least the flat datum line of the boat and i threw in a bunch of junk here set that laser level up to be very close to seven inches from the top of the sole all right so if we look up underneath my bed you can see the laser scooting along and blinding you in the eye and if we look back this way and uh, you can see that the laser line i'm assuming you can see is just slightly below the center line of the steering cable hole um now remember this is horizontal there's no account for slope yet but that'll allow me to go out into the uh aft into the cockpit and determine whether or not uh, that gives me the slope i was counting on okay then <laughs> you won't be able to see it but i've just been able to determine that the laser line comes right to here here in the uh in the in the uh, bilge of the aft of the cockpit and if i put my tape on the top of the through hull uh, that is very close to the five inches um, that I'm looking for drop in this section. So this has worked out very, very well. Um, now I just have to decide where to drill the hole in the bulkhead. Somewhere be maybe an inch higher, or maybe a little bit more. I'm thinking about these things. Okay, for the five inches available from the muffler to the transom, and this is my datum. I'm going to use uh, two of them from the transom back and three of them from the tra uh, from the bulkhead back and two of them from the bulkhead forward, making this the top of the hole in the bulkhead. <laughs> Okay, let's see if this is going to be absolutely miserable or a piece of cake. Oh my gosh, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. That turned out very nice. And here we have the hose emerging with plenty of... Um, uh, hose left, uh, which is nice because I was kind of wondering for a second Anyway, so now I'm gonna run the laser through and uh, Create that slope from this point back to the bulkhead and to do that. I'm just gonna put the slightest little bit of cardboard uh, tape actually underneath this end of the level and Play with that a little bit until it creates the perfect laser line. Let me turn this on and uh Okay, so now in this joyous location under the bed, you can see all the marks on the frames uh, where the top of the pipe, the hose, is on its slope. So I'm just going to sit here, I can't do it with one hand, and take a marker and mark these off. Okay, so all that's left to do, I'm going to temporarily attach these in the proper location um, with these temporary zip straps, which I absolutely love. And that will allow me 
to build a proper support for this afterwards. Now, you're gonna see that um, I'm kind of confounding the steering cables right now. And that's gonna be a problem because they're running in basically exactly the same spot. So I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do about that, but the exhaust must go at this location. The steering cables can move a little bit. Actually, I didn't feel comfortable with the zip ties, so I've replaced it with plumber strap. Still not a finished solution, but certainly robust enough to deal with uh, the next couple of starts. Now I'm gonna have to deal with the steering, but we'll come to that later. And a quick and dirty platform for the muffler. I say quick and dirty, it is marine ply and it's probably the piece that will be put here eventually but of course this all has to come out again at the haul out to put my new framing through here. Alright then, to help sort of visualize how this is all going to go, I'm going to slip the exhaust pipe onto the engine and then uh, start to play with various arrangements over here. Um, it's kind of a shame, this is a massive um, piece of storage here. Uh, it's not easy to get to because the, the bench that's going to be here will be semi-permanent, but it would be a good location for, I'd always imagined, a gray tank or some other semi-low service thing. But anyway, so now I'm kind of wondering if I'll bring the hose in along this side and uh, around this way. I don't know, because of course the two inch is very flexible, but at a certain point I have to switch to three inch. Okay, I really like what I got set up now. This is fastened, so um, the main exhaust pipe will take a nice gentle sweep from here. Uh, the muffler is now at the forward end of this um, storage space, locker space, whatever we're going to call this. And this will easily come down in here and fit on to the adapter and leave most of this space available. I like it. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward. Um, my friend fluid film inside. And in here. And on the Union coupler, I don't know what they're calling this thing. And one, another one here. There we go. Now, of course, these will all be double clamped eventually, uh, but let's just get it on and aligned. <coughs> I love it! Love it! Love it! Well, holy smoke, I am beat up, but that worked out very, very, very slick. Down through here, through the adapter, the muffler, a nice gentle curve there, and that long downhill slope all the way into the uh, lazarette under the cockpit sole. Very, very pleased with that, and I have all this area here on this side for some future thing. Gosh knows, maybe, I don't know, water maker? Hmm, now that would need more maintenance. That's it for me, we got the exhaust done. I'm gonna have a shower and go upstairs and have a beer. Well, hello there and welcome to the Travels with Jordy beer of the day. Yes, bonus episode today and likely another one tomorrow. Let's get straight to the beer. Uh, this is from Steel and Oak over on the mainland um, in British Columbia and it's their Grove uh, Pale Ale, which I'm really looking forward to uh, because I admit it's a citrus beer and I actually kind of like citrus beers. So let's see what this pour is like. It looks a little hazy which I also adore. Oh, what a busy, busy weekend it's been. Uh, but getting lots done, as you can see. And there's a special treat for tomorrow. All you have to do is be patient. Cheers to the Steel and Oaks. I forgot what it was. <laughs> Grove. <laughs> Pale Ale. Okay, no, that's too citrusy. That's too citrusy. Is it over the side? No, this isn't quite over the side, but that's like, no, no. Okay, <clears throat> too bad. Uh, move on. Yesterday's winner of a Travels Jewelry uh, t-shirt was Monica Eaton. So get a hold of me and we'll make sure you get your t-shirt. Um, new Patreon just came on uh, since yesterday. Uh, Noel Allen Vincent, thank you ever so much, Noel, and cheers to you. I'd like to say it's growing on me, but, but it isn't. Also a new PayPal supporter, thanks so much, Andrew. Uh, Petruzenko, 
Petruzenko. I'm hoping that did that okay. It's also my handwriting isn't all that good. Um, two, uh, and cheers to you, Andrew. Thanks so much. And um, two uh, new gifts came in from the Amazon wish list. Uh, so grateful. A three pack of uh, the fine blades, which I'm very grateful for, for the fine uh, multi tool cutter because these are very, very pricey. So it's nice to be able to have nice new sharp ones. And two more spools of 14.2 electrical wire, which is going to be great because my gosh, I'm gonna to need tons of them. Both of those sets of gifts came in without any sort of indication of who sent them. So cheers to you, whoever you are, and let me know who you are and I can thank you properly. Mm. It's beer. Um. Yes, there's going to be another bonus episode tomorrow, Monday. Um, and what's great about that one is we're gonna start the engine. Yes, we are. Now, to be fair, the timeline's a bit corrupted here. We started the engine last uh, Thursday uh, with Ben Gartside of Gartside Marine, the Canadian distributor for Beta Marine. And uh, because to fulfill the warranty, he has to be there for the first start. And uh, it was magical. It was just fantastic. Started first bump. Don't have a lot of footage, but you will see the engine run uh, after we sort out the last of the electrical and things like that. So that's tomorrow's episode. And just be patient. We're almost there. Bring us to the word of the week. Patience. You know what to do. See you tomorrow.